How are we doing, hey, Ed? Hey, I'm great, Jeff. Hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Yes, you guys too. Thanks. Um, just, you know, the obvious Jason Peters moving over to the right guard spot. He had a little taste of it uh, in the summertime, um, but he's gotten away from it. I mean, how has he kind of adjusted this week to that move? And what do you see from him going forward there? Number one, uh, had the conversation that he and I had, he was outstanding. He was like, Coach, whatever you need me to do um, to get the best five guys on the field, I'm all in. We went out there yesterday, and uh, you guys see us down. We do our little traditional uh, working on combination blocks, and I'm just amazed at how he sees angles. He's almost like an artist. He, it doesn't matter what position he plays. He understands. Like, visually, he gets it. And so, you know, Kelsey and him were trying to – talk through the block, and he's like, come on, let's just go do it. And uh, he's really um, just a natural. Chris and then Bo Wolf. Hey, Jeff. Uh, you've coached uh, Jason Kelsey since 2013, since you arrived with the team. How? Yes. What has he meant to this offensive line, and how has he evolved from that time, from 2013 till today? Um, I just think that he's always been uh, extremely passionate, um, I, I think I think the leadership uh, portion of it, and he's matured so much about, you know, um, he, he loves to. Um, right now, he's at a point where he's so detailed in all the things that he's doing. More, that, I would say that's probably the most the thing that comes to my my brain the most is the detail and and how we're going to do certain things. Um, it, you know, between the, the guys, between him and the guy next to him. And, and we even, even when we build the game plan, he's so awesome. They all are, um, but, but he's the leader of it all, you know. Um, so it's a lot of fun. It's really been a lot of fun working with him. Oh, and then Les Bowman. Coach, in the, you know, in the interest of getting the, the five best guys on the field, um, it seems, at least from the outside, like you could have made this move Peters to right guard and, and Jordan to left tackle a few weeks ago when, when Jordan came back. Why why make it now and not then? Well, at that point in time, I, I, and, and, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into that. You know, teams you're playing, uh, personnel, um, all these types of things are, 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 are put into the decision making with the best five guys on the field. So at that point in time, that's that's truly how I felt. Less and then Mike K. Hey, Stout. So yeah, nice. you've got uh, Matt Pryor at right tackle now uh, and, and Jordan at left tackle. What do they have to do? What do they need to improve on? Uh, they can't be, I guess, uh, Jason Peters or Lane Johnson uh, right away. But what do you see as their uh, focuses, uh, you know, as they step into these positions? Less. Um... If you watch the end of that Cleveland game, I don't like, to, but, you know, but Matt Pryor played the right tackle. We had, we were running out of players, so we, we had to <laughs> switch switch some positions. And if you watch the set lines that he that he was using, and you watch, uh, he's such a big guy that and he's such, such such long arms that um, for Matt, it's the detail, the, the all the little things that go into, you know, where's my angle, where's the defender lined up, and then most importantly. <clears throat> What's the time? I call it spatial awareness. When I see that defender closing on me, at what point in time am I going to be ready to take him on with my hands, keeping my head and shoulders out? And this is all part of the, this is where the Jason Peters and Elaine Johnson, they've done this so many times. I'm a firm believer in repetitions. You know, um, that's, that's something that I totally believe in. Like, you know, um, our screen game right now, okay? It isn't where it needs to be, okay? But you know what? When we were running our screens uh, and the timing of our screens, and we've had a lot of different players playing different positions. I think that's a part of the deal. But when we were really good at running screens, okay, we were getting the we were getting the reps of it. We were we were, and I don't just mean in practice. I mean in the games. When you start calling a couple of screens and they're not working, you can't gravitate away from them. But 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 the timing of all these things are so important. And to get the repetition of it, to feel it out, to know at what point do I leave to become part of the element of the screen. And I think that's the same thing with these guys playing tackle. And that's where I think Jordan has each and every week, um, I analyze him and I'm watching and I'm like, like right now, he's got the timing factor. Jordan does. He knows, 
He knows when that guy's closing in on him. Prior to this, a couple weeks ago, he was struggling with that, in my opinion. Thank you. Mike and then John McMullen. Hey, Sal, as the run game coordinator, we make a lot of – I was just curious your opinion about the usage of the run game. Obviously, I think it's like 36 to 64 run-pass ratio. Um, how do you think the run running game has performed, and would you like to see more opportunities for the running game? I just – all I know is I want, to, I want to get positive yards on whatever play we call. It doesn't matter to me, okay, number one. Number two, each and every time coach does call a run – all right, we we do a, we spend a lot of time in the run division making sure that every single concept that we have has an answer for the style of defense that we're playing. Some people will blitz the nickel off the edge. Uh, some people will bring the strong safety from the tight end. Some people will move the the, the line. Some guys put uh, some defensive uh, units will put five people on the line of scrimmage and they'll be heavy to stop the run. Some people <laughs> are, are are saying to you like the team we're playing right now, they're going to say, we're going to make it very, very difficult for you to run the football. Now they become susceptible in the back end. So these are the things that you have to consider and you have to understand before you make a, a statement of, of something like that. Uh, I, I just know that, uh, once again, when we talk through how we're going to block these particular fronts and these looks, uh, how we're going to surface those blocks, there's where we spend all of our time and all of our energy and all of our focus and I think the players have done a good job with that part of it. John and then Zach Berman. Hey, hey Stout. Uh, in regards, you mentioned the moving parts. Um, earlier in the season, Nate Herbig got a lot of time at right guard and left guard. And, and then he had the, the finger injury, and you guys wanted to look at Sua a little bit. Is that just a normal hiccups of a young player uh, going through this for the first time or what exactly? Um, Are you talking about Nate Herbig? Nate Herbig yeah. being, yeah. No, Nate Herbig did nothing wrong. Nate Herbig, uh, you know, every, every player, you know, during the course of a season gets banged up here, banged up there, and then you have to assess whether or not that player at that point is is still, you know, going to be capable of performing the, the task at hand. And so, at that point in time, and I had a conversation with Nate, and he totally understood, you know. And so um, then we, we we elected to use Sue Opeta, and and that's the guy you should be asking me about in terms of how did he perform? Because I thought he had been outstanding. I thought I think his development over the last few weeks um, has has really done well. I mean, um, so when you look at him, and, and he's played against some really good players in the New York Giant, you know, Giants and all, and those guys are physical, and he I thought he performed pretty good, you know, for a young player like that. But, I, but, but, so, but, but, but Nate Herbig did, did nothing wrong. Uh, Nate Herbig is a valuable uh, a part of our offensive line. And as he, uh, and I think that, you know, having some time to you know, feel better and all that is going to help him. Thanks, Dale. Yes, sir. Zach and then Rob Kessner. Hey Jeff, I I, I know uh, three weeks is a lifetime in coach. Oh, I'm sorry, three months is a is a, a lifetime in coaching. But if I can take you back to the summer when when uh, Dillard first got hurt, it wasn't Maya Lada who was getting those left tackle reps. It was it was Matt Pryor. Uh, why was that at the time? And do you think you you could have had a better sense of Jordan going into the season if he had those first those those first team left tackle snaps then? Uh, repeat the question. I don't really. I know that Matt Pryor. You know, yeah. one of the things we do in the preseason. Uh, yeah, repeat the question, please, because I don't. Sorry. I don't understand. I'll ask it more succinctly. Is is that during the summer after Dillard's injury, you went to Pryor as the first option at left tackle and not Jordan Mailata? Why was that at the time? And do you think you would have had a better sense of of Jordan at left tackle going into the season? If he was playing left tackle during those two weeks, no, I don't think that it's. That, I don't think that hampered Jordan's development at all. Uh, but what it did do was it, it allowed me to assess whether or not Matt Pryor could be could could play left tackle if we needed him to. I got my answer. You know, I, I was able to, to 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 define my 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 questions in my mind. So um, that's a very important part of it, also. And so when we do things like that. And and we 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 make decisions like that like this. I know and you know as the season goes on 
there's going to be landmines. Guys are going to get banged up. Guys are going to get injured. And it happens every single year. And so to be able to have this information in your back pocket uh, going forward in the heat of the moment, you have to make decisions. Do you realize that before every game I sit down, okay, and I learned this from Coach Saban. Coach Saban was great about this with me. He would, be, he would make me. He and I would sit down, and we would go through every scenario that could happen in the game. Here's your seven or eight guys. Here, he would say to me, it would be like a mock game. He'd say, all right, he, he's out. He, he's hurt. What are you doing? And I had, to, I had to have that all planned out beforehand. So when we go into a game, I, I've got that all scripted out. If this happens, if that happens, what are we going to – so so that – and then sometimes, <laughs> believe it or not, even with all of that said, something happens like the last game where you're down to – you know, you, you never thought that scenario would occur. And then, you know, so um, – I think that kind of information helps me later on. Okay, thank you. We have time for one more, uh, so we'll go Rob Kessner. Stout, just want to ask you, you know, I, I know from a coach's perspective that the, the mindset is there are no excuses, right? But you've had 10 different groupings in 11 games, and that that is a challenge, the likes of which you probably have never encountered in, in one season. So when you face a challenge like that, how, how, what is your approach? Be careful driving, by the way. I don't know if you're driving I'm not or not. I'm driving. I, I stopped. I oh, stopped. okay. Good. Good. Okay. <laughs> so um, th that's a great question. And, and, and look, we don't, I don't ever want to have that kind of situation happen, but there's always the chance of something like that happening. So you have to be prepared. Here's the biggest thing. We make around here with the Philadelphia Eagles and around here in the offseason and the OTAs, and the, we make so much hay. We This is where you build your foundation. I've said this to you guys over and over and over, how much we get done in the offseason. This is where we build our foundation, and this is where the young players really develop and learn how to play offensive line for the Philadelphia Eagles. And so that kind of thing was – we missed all of that this year. And we really did. And it affected us, believe me. But we lived, we live off that kind of stuff. When we have to implement a player, that player that come in and say, okay, remember we did all these things in the offseason. We worked on all these departure angles. We worked on all these surfacing of these blocks. You remember back in March when we had to do, you know, and so they have that muscle memory. They have that, rem that that's part of the thing for the player. I think a player learns so much better when they're doing it, opposed to sitting in a meeting or watching a film or a lot of these guys have to actually be engaged and feel it and do it. Once they do it, they, they're like, oh, yeah, I got this, coach. I know what you're talking about. And so we missed that part of it. So what I try hard right now, what's really saving me, <laughs> to be honest with you, is I really focus on what we are doing in the moment, what we are doing for that particular game and that game plan. And I tr really try hard. I try my butt off to not think about anything else. Don't be distracted. Focus on teaching the player exactly the line you want him to take or how to surface this particular guy, this jersey number guy. He does something a little different than that guy. And this is the matchups that we have. And this is what we really focus on. And I really, really work hard at staying focused on it and not even, like, worrying about – because you know what? Whatever happens – I have no control of it. You don't have any control of it. It is what it is. We, we, gotta, we still got to go out there and perform and execute. So I don't even worry about that stuff. I just focus on who is it that's at the position, and then the next guy that's up, we got to get him ready fast and get him to understand and to teach. So it's all about the teaching of, of the player who's there at the moment and keep the young players, the guys that are at the backup roles, keep them sharp. You know, really demand from them in meetings. You know, wake, you know, like really push them like they're in a game. I, I say to them, I go, look, I want you to pretend that you're literally the starter here and you're going in the game. That should be your mindset in these meetings each and every day. So that's how I deal with it.